Uh, all right, let's do this now. Bing. Backlog, 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 backlog. Welcome to the backlog, everybody. Backlog show where we go into our backlog and play a game from a backlog. Well, we don't play it, we talk about it. Every game we've ever bought throughout our entire lives has gone into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. Oh, boy. Oh, the last couple have been great been, games that yeah. we've all play, that yes, we played. Yes. This one's 743. 743, and it is call of duty black ops for the xbox 360 this is the first one the first black first ops. black ops. yes all right this was good this i like yeah this I was actually black pretty ops. good uh this was still in the era where call of duty like ha didn't outstay its welcome just yet and no the, this was peak call of duty yeah and it was interesting because like the year before was modern warfare 2 probably the best game in the entire series yes, that was my favorite call of duty yeah. for sure and this year, uh, that was an Infinity Ward game, the original Call of Duty developers. And then the year after was a Treyarch year. Treyarch and, year. Yeah. And like, you know, people didn't hate the Treyarch games, um, but they didn't hold a candle to what Infinity Ward was doing with Call of Duty. But this was the year they like stepped up. They put on their big boy pants. They're like, all right, we're going to make a fucking Call of Duty game to remember. And I think they came pretty close. It's still... I think it like set a weird precedent with like Call of Duty games going forward because like the Modern Warfare games were still like pretty goofy. Yeah. Uh, and this one, like, I think started leaning more into like, we're a serious, we're a serious uh, story, even though yeah. it is very much not a serious they story. They tried to tell like an artsy story. Yeah. And it, it, all Call of Duty stories are bad. I don't yes. care how much you like Ghost and Price and whatever. Yeah. They're they're not good stories. Right. Uh, there's cool moments yeah. in the game. Yeah, 100%. But yeah. Every Call of Duty game I've played, I get to one of those moments and they're talking and doing their whole dialogue. And I'm like, I have no idea <laughs> who you are or what the fuck you're talking well, about. Well, I think, you know, at least in the, in the games before this, like the story was always told in a way where it was like simple enough where you got the basics and you can move forward. Yeah, bad guy, good guy. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. like they'll I like pepper in like a conspiracy theory, but it wasn't like essential. This game, like they really focused on the story. They really tried to tell the story of uh, your player character, Alex Mason, uh, who was kidnapped and basically became a Manchurian candidate. And you're trying to like piece together your memories. Um, and you're, uh, and you have this, uh, Gary Oldman is in the game. He plays, uh, Victor Reznov, your partner, uh, who follows you through the game or does he follow you through the game? Ooh. <laughs> uh, they really upped, the, the, like, I'm serious. It was Gary Oldman. Uh, and he did, they did up a lot of like the Hollywood talent in this. Ed Harris is in the game. Um, also because their previous games sold so well yeah, that they, they were able it. to be like, hey, we have all this money. This is how popular these games yeah. are. Uh, your player character, again, Alex Mason, is voiced by Sam Worthington. This is like back when Avatar first came out and he was actually in movies. Uh, it's unfortunate because he's Australian and sometimes his Australian accent comes through. <laughs> um, and Ice Cube's in the game. I don't because remember why, that at Because why not? Uh, so, so I... I was huge on Modern Warfare 2. I yeah. loved that game. I played the multiplayer a lot. And then mm -hmm. this came out and I liked it and I played a lot of this too, but I didn't like it as much as Modern Warfare 2. I think I just didn't like the, uh, it was 80s, right? Uh, it was the 60s. 60s. It, was, it was trying to be a Cold War game. I didn't like the 60s era and the guns that you used in it. Yeah. I, I like the modern <laughs> weapons better. It, it's also too like, I don't know if there's ever really been a video game that does like the Vietnam era well, because every every time like they do like a Vietnam era war game, it's very like exploitative in a way like the, the Vietnam war, like that era was like very, you know, ask your dad. It was very <laughs> controversial. It was very scary. It was the first time like people questioned the purpose of war and like, you know, good guys and bad guys. Why are we there? Why are we yeah. fighting? And with video games, especially like war video games set during the Vietnam era, it has a habit of distilling everything back down to the black and white good guy and bad guy routine. And, you know, this game tried to be like 
a little bit more serious. It tried to play more with like the ambiguity of war and the horrors of war, but it still uh, defaults back to like the Call of Duty tropes and the Call of du Duty silliness. Yeah, that works very well. But when you try to like also take it seriously with like all, all the the Vietnam era stuff, it kind it definitely creates like a disconnect. So this was back when I played uh, single player campaigns for Call of Duty games. Yeah. But I also spent a long time in the multiplayer. This was, I remember this being part of the argument for uh, games being $60. Like this was, felt like some of the best value at the time for oh, a $60 yeah. game because it had uh, a great single player. It had a great multiplayer with a lot of different game modes and stuff and everybody was on it. Yeah. It had uh, the zombies had zo mode, Yeah. And it had all of Zork. Yes. In it? Yeah. The 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 freaking text based yeah. old game Zork. The and whole had, game was it somehow had an playable. Extra hidden uh twin stick shooter in it. If you knew how to access that. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, no, the the game definitely had like a lot of value. Like this, I, I I didn't really play the zombies mode that much, but I, I but played it a couple of times. That was extremely popular. Yeah, I played it a couple of times. That was fun because it was I thought it was gonna be like a standard like horde mode, mm -hmm. but it's really a little bit more than that. You have to like you know, fortify your base. You have to like fall back and like this just guy who's keep playing expanding. has terrible aim. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's easy to aim, and especially if you're playing. We played on 360. It was easy to aim in that game. Auto aiming it's, was very yeah, it generous. Snap! It should snap yeah. to the bad guy. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of the the people still play the zombies mode. The yeah. zombies in the newest Call of Duty. Yeah, that yeah. People like. I think the zombies mode is how people like level up weapons to play in like Warzone. Makes sense. Stuff. This was not the first Call of Duty game to have zombies. That was actually the previous Treyarch game, World at War, which I think, this is a direct sequel to. I think this popularized it. This this took it to the next level. Yeah. This is what made it like the mode for Call of Duty. And the the, the characters were all U.S. presidents, right? There was a mode where you uh, the characters were. It was JFK, uh, Robert McNamara, his Secretary of State, uh, Fidel Castro. Yes. And uh, Richard Nixon. That was the zombies mode, wasn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. those were characters you could play in the zombies mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This game was very bizarre because, like, it implied that your your player character killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, very strongly into that, like, you know, you were you were actually the one who killed Kennedy. You don't play the the Dallas scene. You should, though. You should. That you should Yeah, have. that would have been funny. That would have been... That would have made the game a lot better. Yeah. Uh... I remember there was one part in the game uh, where the game broke on me. You were like in Vietnam and like they had to shoot these barrels. That it wasn't was, yeah. clear that you had that to shoot the barrels. For a lot of people, there was a part yeah. where like, no, you didn't shoot the barrels. You had to push the barrels down the hill. Oh, you had to kick them. And there was, there's no in-game prompt to tell you yeah. to do that other than somebody saying, hey, you should kick the barrels. Like that was it. That was all you were given. Yeah. So a lot of people got stuck on that. Yeah. yeah but you're sitting there at, and they they endlessly send enemies at you. And yeah. in order for you to trigger them to stop sending the enemies, is you're supposed to kick the barrel. But you don't know that because the whole game leading up to that point, you kill as many enemies as you well, can. Well, it's interesting because there's a... There was actually, at the time, there was a really popular video making the rounds. Of somebody played the entire first level of the game, which is the Bay of Pigs invasion, which didn't go well for the U.S. <laughs> Ask your history teacher or your dad. Um, yes, did. <laughs> they played that level... Firing only two shots in the throughout the entire level because there were story specific moments where you had to fire a gun. Mm -hmm. The rest of the of the mission, all the player did was move forward to the right checkpoints because the game didn't necessarily care what you were doing as long as you were yeah. progressing forward because it wasn't really about like a robust player experience. It was just about funneling you through a tunnel. And then you get to the Vietnam section that we were talking about, and now all of a sudden, like, you have to actually play the game. Yeah, I think this happens a lot with the first level of shooters, is it's usually a cinematic experience. Yeah. It's usually uh, there's there's a, just a lot of set pieces happening around you, whereas yeah. in the rest of the game, there are triggers to trigger events. That well, you have also, to it's hit. like... You know, Call of Duty games in particular, but like bad Call of Duty copy, copies especially were always criticized for specifically that, for funneling you through a tunnel yeah. to get from point A to point B, regardless of what you're actually doing in the game. Because that's like, you know, once you figure that out, like the game's easy. There's no like real challenge there. 
and it, it like brings game design back a few steps rather than like actively trying to challenge the player you're just saying like go here now go here now go here oh you beat the game yeah. good for you here's a here's a cookie uh i still continue to play call of duty games after this this was definitely like the start of the decline for me yeah um it wasn't until was it was it black ops there was a later black ops game where i said fuck this i'm never playing call of duty again <laughs> and it was uh it was, was two it? It, it was two or three which one was the future so black ops 2 was both the past and the future and the black ops 3 was just the future I, it must have been three then. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't play past Black Ops 2. So Black Ops 3, mm -hmm. uh, I was playing the single player. And like your character has these like weird memory glitches and they're like jumping through time. Yeah. But it's only the future. But right. he's jumping through like a, it, and it's it makes little sense what's happening. And he's constantly jumping around. And he jumped around and the uh network disconnected and i was like i'm <laughs> playing the single player right so i stopped playing yeah played it again. yeah the, the black ops series like that's their whole thing like you you know you can't trust your character what's real and what's fake you know because they were trying to play off of like you spec know, ops the line <laughs> well no well I'll, I'll get to spec ops in a minute but like they were playing off like you know the paranoid 60 spy thrillers are like oh are you secretly a russian agent you know manchurian candidate shit but again, it's like it's Call of Duty. Like you're 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 a dumb game. You know, don't try to be anything yeah. more than you are. Um, but yeah, Spec Ops Line. It's interesting how we talked about that last week and how like that game like really like tried to push forward the genre of the modern military shooter and make you think about like you know what are you doing? Are you really the hero? Like what is the point of all this? And then you know now we're talking about. It's exact opposite. Yeah. And not just it's exact opposite, but it's exact opposite who's trying to be trying to show like, hey, we're an adult too, you know, we can <laughs> we can do serious. So I said that I never played Call of Duty again. I mean the single player games. I I dived into the multiplayer a couple times. Uh Warzone I've been on every, I I've been playing a lot of right. Warzone. Uh but before that, uh it's all the battle royales. Black Ops Four, I think, was only multiplayer. Only multiplayer. And they had a battle royale mode. Right. Uh, that was Warzone, right? No, it was called something else. Um, it's called Blackout mode. Okay. Uh, and that was good, and I played that a little bit. Okay. Uh, but then I kind of stopped until Warzone came out. Right. And then Warzone Two, I dropped off, and then Warzone Three, I played for a while, and I haven't played in like a month. Yeah, I mean, I like, I dabbled here and there. I played the Modern Warfare remake because I was curious about it, but it was basically the same game i played years ago and then i played uh black ops cold war which i only played because you left it in the series x when you gave it to me oh yeah so like, i did play that multiplayer yeah I'm like i might bit. as well play it. and it's like black ops cold war did like one really cool level and then the rest was like more or less like a beat for beat remake of black ops one even down to like a gratuitous president cameo so it's like it's so weird that like this game series like has not changed much so I really liked Modern Warfare 1 and 2 and 3 was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the originals. And I didn't want to play them again when they remade them. Right. Uh, so I, I started looking up videos of like the cinematics and stuff because I wanted to like see, you know, like how much better it's gotten and whatever. Yeah. It's completely different. They changed like a lot of what the story was. And yeah. also the story still doesn't make any goddamn right. sense yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, the original Black Ops. Is it worth playing now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like that's a Call of Duty has become like Madden. It's like why yeah. bother playing any any of the past ones? Just play the new one. Yeah. It's the same thing. Just like you know, it's literally the same thing with a roster update. I wouldn't recommend playing uh, the latest Modern Warfare because uh, that mul that single player I heard is really half assed. It's like yeah. barely a single player. Yeah. Uh, maybe the last one, maybe Modern yeah. Warfare 2, play that one. I mean, if you're curious, play it. If you played it in the past and you liked it, you might get a kick out of playing it again. Um, I just don't know. Like, if you've never played this before, I don't know if it has any value to you, especially if you played Call of Duty games since then. Yeah. If you played Black Ops Cold War, you basically played this game in the 80s instead of the 60s. Uh, Edward Bova says Medal of Honor has always been better because it had it was more historically accurate 
and educational. The original Medal of Honor. We were a big Medal of Honor fans originally because we were GameCube boys. Right. Well, I mean, it's it's funny because Medal of Honor, an EA series, was, you know, partially created by, uh, what's their names? I know their names. Uh, Jason West and Vince Zampella. And then they left to form Infinity Ward to create Call of Duty. And then Activision fired them uh, for whole reasons that were kind of scummy. And so they went to create Respawn, which is now owned by EA. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, their games, you know, Medal of... The first few Medal of Honors up to Allied Assault, uh, the first four or five Call of Duty games, and then Titanfall 2 and Jedi uh, Fallen Order, those are all great fucking games. Yeah. And the Call of Duty games haven't been as great, so... I don't know. What's the secret formula that's missing? Also, they tried to redo Medal of Honor in modern times, and that was terrible. That, that was, was terrible. really bad. I can't wait till we talk about that. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. Don't play this game. Play, play one of the newer ones or or uh, play with it. Whichever Call of Duty you feel like. Playing. Yeah. just the, just What you do is you go. They're you, all the same. You print out like box art of all the Call of Duty games. You, you put it on a wall and throw a fucking dart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you'll hit one that is... Okay. Yeah. Thanks for watching the backlog. We'll see you all later. Come to a podcast. Bye. Bye.